Hey everyone, and welcome to day two of this Learn Spark in Microsoft Fabric series. Today, we're going to be focusing on why Spark. We're going to be looking at three things in particular. Why does Spark even exist? You know, what problem does it solve? Why are we going through this hassle of learning Spark when we've already learned Python, we've already learned R? Why do we need to learn Spark as well? Then we're going to be looking at why have Microsoft embedded Spark within two of the most important parts of Microsoft Fabric, the data engineering experience and the data science experience. So why have Microsoft put this open source technology right at the heart of their new solution? Finally, we're going to be looking at when should we use Spark in Fabric? We have lots of tools available to us within Microsoft Fabric. When should we be using the Spark and the notebooks and this kind of thing? So what kind of scenarios would you expect to use Spark? I think this is a really important piece of kind of groundwork that we all need to do together um, just to understand, okay, why do we need to use Spark? And I just want to start with a couple of bits, bits of housekeeping. So thank you very much for your comments on the first video in this series. Shout out to Amrita, who's looking forward to following along, as is Lissa also. So love reading your comments. Um, if you have any questions as we go through the course, then leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to reply to all of them. The other thing is that I've created a playlist. So currently there's only one video in there. But as we go through this series, I'm going to be adding each video into this playlist. And you can get to that either from the channel homepage, if you just go to channel and playlists, then we've got this one here, Learn Apache Spark in Fabric. So that's a really good way of watching all the videos from start to finish. And the final point that I want to make is that all of the notebooks that we're going to be going through in this series I'm going to be putting them all on GitHub so you can follow along. In this uh, notebook, there's no code. We're just doing the kind of markdown. We're going to be using it to you know, just follow through some of the topics. But in future, there'll be code examples for a lot of the uh, tutorials that I'm going to be giving. So to find that, it's github.com forward slash learn Microsoft Fabric. And again, I'll leave a link in the description. Let's get into day two, why Spark? So first, why does Spark even exist? Well, in essence, Spark exists to manage and clean and transform and analyze and predict on big data sets. So we're not talking kind of a million rows, we're talking billions of rows, we're talking gigabytes and terabytes and petabytes. The whole point of Spark is that it's scalable. And the way that it works under the hood is, well, instead of having one really big computer with lots of processing power, the whole idea behind Spark is to distribute that computation power across lots of different computers, basically. So the way that it works is if you have a really big data set, it will split that data set up into various parts and it will store each part on a separate server basically. And it stores it in memory. So in memory, when we store data in memory, it means that it can be accessed very quickly and we can do calculations on it very quickly. So all of these kind of distributed servers are managed by kind of a cluster manager. And when we write code in Spark, the cluster manager in Spark under the hood, it analyzes our code. It looks at what we want to do it creates a kind of list of tasks and it says, okay, I need to get this, or I need to perform this computation on these partitions of data. And then it's gonna return the results back into us in our Fabric notebook in this example. And it will say, here you go, here's your data frame. And the reason why this is so much quicker on big data is that it can do this in parallel. So you might have a hundred tasks in your kind of computation scheduler. And so when you're splitting your data up in like a hundred pieces, it can do these computations on all a hundred pieces in parallel and then return the results up to a hundred times faster in that example. So that's why Spark exists. That's what it does really well. It's been around for a while now and it's become basically the number one platform for big data. It's used by 80% of 
the Fortune 500 companies. And so it's a really kind of well matured piece of software at the moment. It's especially suited to things like natural language processing so and also image processing. So data sets that are difficult to manage within kind of structured SQL traditional type databases, that's where it really thrives because it can perform this kind of feature engineering on these really large bits of text, for example, like the whole of Wikipedia or like the whole of Reddit, for example. And it can break down these words and phrases. It's got lots of tooling for doing that sort of thing. And then performing computation, um, machine learning especially, on these data sets. But we don't have to use it just for machine learning. It's also a general purpose kind of data transformation tool as well. So we've talked about splitting your big data into smaller partitions and storing it in memory across many physical or virtual servers. Now, in the case of Fabric, these servers are obviously abstracted away from you. You know, Microsoft manages that for us. We just write the, the high level code and they kind of manage all of that, managing these servers and the, all of that stuff. And we've mentioned that it performs computation in parallel. Okay, so why have Microsoft built their end-to-end -end analytics platform around this technology? Well, as I've mentioned previously, the data world has converged on Spark. You know, it's really proliferated. It's used by thousands and thousands of companies, and it's become the kind of go-to tool for big data processing. And specifically within this architecture, you can see that even the way that Microsoft are marketing Fabric is the data platform for the era of AI. So that's really important. We need an underlying engine that is capable of scaling up to you know, the data sets that we see in AI, which is normally very, very large data sets. So it's really important to have a platform kind of underpinning this, which is Spark, that is scalable and it can deal with huge data sets. So throughout this course, we're going to be looking at data engineering and the data science experience, but everything's going to be built on Spark. So when should we use Spark? Obviously, we've got all of these different things here. So when do we want to be doing stuff in the data engineering notebooks, for example? Well, some of it might be obvious and some of it might not be. With Spark, we get the ability to write code in a variety of different languages. Obviously, Python, we can write Python. We can also write it in R and also in Scala and also Java as well. I don't think you can write Java actually in the Fabric notebooks, but you can write Java in normal Spark. So if we want to be writing code, if we know how to use Python and we want to be, you know, maybe you know Pandas really well, then we want to be using these Fabric notebooks. And there's even a piece of functionality in Fabric called single node mode. So when I mentioned how, Fab, how Spark generally is used in a distributed manner, so it manages lots of different nodes, right, for really big data processing. Well, we also have the option to just use one of those nodes. And if you use it in that kind of single node mode, it's a bit like using Python on your own computer. So you can use Pandas libraries, you can use you know, all of your traditional kind of machine learning stuff scikit-learn or tensorflow or whatever you want and you don't have to do it across in a distributed manner the other time that we want to be using spark in fabric is when we want to be doing programmatic data loading right because when we've got our data pipelines yes you can do a little bit of kind of looping through various data sets but it is a little bit limited and even more so with data flows. You know, it's for people that want that low code experience um, for getting data into Fabric. But if we want to be doing more advanced things like automating, running through lots of different tables and performing more heavy duty calculations or querying APIs and doing lots of transformations, really we want to be doing that in Spark, in Fabric. It's also really strong for machine learning, which we can't really do anywhere else in Fabric and statistical analysis, and lots and lots of kind of vector-based math. And like I've mentioned before, when we're analyzing text and images, that's a really good use case as well. Okay, so that is the brief overview of why we're bothering learning Spark. So that leaves us with four things for you to do. You can view this notebook and all the others in the series in GitHub. 
leave a comment below, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already because there'll be a new video tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll be looking in more detail about the components of Spark. And so leave us a like and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.